Hi, this is Dana with Designs by Dana. Yep, that's me. I'll show you some pictures today. Me and my daughter. I was asked to do, these are a lot of my designs. I was in Columbus at a Juneteenth a couple of years ago. The first time I really got to see what people thought about my designs. Me and my hubby. Me on a motorcycle. Those are all me. So why did I do this today? Because my hair is all over my head. And uh, I had dropped some pictures of a clock that I made. And I'll insert that in here and show it to you. And someone on my crochet site asked how I did it. So I thought it would be really easy just to go ahead and do a quick tutorial on it to get you going. And I had already actually started one. And so I'm going to start you to bring you to that point and then take you to the end. So this is what I was working on to start my clock. And this is some really thick yarn that I chose to use on this one. I had made a scarf out of this yarn so you can see how thick that is. So then I trimmed it in some white. I had to take two strands so I could have the same thickness as this. You see that? I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with my lighting right now. All right, so let me get you started and show you how to get to that point and then go further. Okay, I'm at the end of row three and I'm going to slip stitch. So, I'm going to just tell you the concept of increase. And you can use this same circle in making anything round, a hat, a tablecloth. And you would just keep doing your increases every row the same way. So what I did was the first row here, I don't count as an increase. So this first one, I did every stitch I put an increase so the second row from the beginning I did every second stitch meaning increase no increase increase no increase so now I'm on the third row from my beginning and I'm gonna do every third one is going to be an increase then when I get to the fourth row same thing it's going to be every fourth one an increase fifth row every sixth, and so on and so on until the piece is as large as you would like it that way you'll have a nice pretty flat increase if you wanted to make it uh say a hat and you wanted more ruffles in it then i would take that first row here and do double it a second time so it's a whole lot more stitches that you're working with. So after I did two stitches in every one, then the next row would have been two stitches in the next row. And then started my increase. And you just kind of play with it. But I'm basically right now I'm just trying to show you how to do the clock. Like I said, I had a request for it. So now I'm going to do one more increase. And that should really give me the size of where I'm at with the one that I'm working on. So actually, if I did one more row, you'll see that this one is going to be where I'm at right here on my fourth, on my fourth row. All right, and you can see how thick this one is compared to how this is. So it just depends on what you got and what you're trying to get out of it. The pictures that I'm going to be showing you, uh, the red one and the one that's in my bathroom, are all done with just regular four ply yarn. And I just did it tight knit with all single crochets. All right, so I'm going to do one more. So every row you're going to start the same way. You're either going to start with a chain one. These are called your foundation chains. You're going to start it with a chain two for a half double. The one was for a single. Or you're going to chain three for a double. And then I always go into the same stitch. 
all right but this one remember I'm doing half doubles so I'm just chaining up two going into the first one starting right off with my double and then so this is number one so then for this is number one no increase number two no increase number three increase so you're gonna do that all the way around one no increase two no increase three increase meaning two stitches in the same one all right and you're gonna do that all the way around okay all right I'm coming to the end one two and three and I'm not going to increase that one it's pretty close to the first one and I'm just going to slip stitch it into the top of there and close it off all right now we're going to pull out the one that I am working on and I did a color change and I'm going to take these next ones and you can do color change, you can do a solid, you can do whatever you like. Like I said, I'm just using my scrap yarn. And uh, I put two, two strands together to give it the thickness of this. And I'm chaining one. And I'm doing singles on this one because... Uh, it's so um, thick already and so what my increase is now going to be one two three so this one should be the fourth one so every fourth one one two three and four and we're just going to do that all the way around. Then you're going to do the same for the fifth. And I'll come back on the fifth. All right, finishing up row four. Slip stitching it together. And I'm going to start row five. Go right back in here. And go one, two, three four and five and when you get finished with this row now anytime in your patterns you can change colors and I always change colors at my beginning so when I get I wasn't sure how big I wanted to make this wall this clock so let me go ahead and do about mmm I'm going to say five or six more rows of white and then I'm going to change colors to this and I'll come back. So whatever row you're on from the middle point, don't count the middle point as one. So that way if the foam rings, you set it down and you come back up and you're wondering where you're at in your increase. Look at your row. Don't count your first row, your first circle. Don't count your uh, magical circle. Count the row. One, two, three, four four so five I'm in five right now so I'm increasing every five so I'm gonna do that for row six seven eight nine I may even go up to ten and when I come back we're going to do a color change so I might as well show you a color change and you can do the color change anywhere in your pattern because I'm color changing twice in this particular pattern because in between the whites when I get out further is where I'm gonna to want to put my time the numbers at and I want the, it to be wide enough so that my numbers pop out in that white area not into the dark area into the white area all right I'm back I stopped at six rows one two three four five six so that was every six one I increased and you can kind of see those points right there because I looked at my stash down there on the ground and I don't really have a lot of it left so 
I want to use, I don't want to get another color and chance that it's going to be not the same color. Now see there, I'm getting ready to add, add this turquoise and brown back. All right, I'm show you how I add it. There's a lot of ways you can do it. This is just one I'm doing. So I slip stitched it together to end the row. I take and leave about three inches and I just pull it into the loop. And then I tighten that white. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the, this and add it back in when I get up because I'm gonna go maybe four or five more rows up and I don't want this getting mixed up with my running yarn here. And for me, it's just really easy. And this is the back of the clock and I'll uh, put it all, all the tails in so it won't look bad in case somebody looks at the back. So I'm getting my scissors right now and I'm just gonna cut the tail of the white All right, and I've added in, and then I'm going to take and tie those two together just to knot it. Now, if I was doing something that needed to be washed, I'd do a little bit more. Hold on while I answer this phone. All right, so I tied a knot, or tied it once, and then I'm going to tie it again. I'm in my basement, and I hear my husband up there walking. I think he's trying to find me. I told him I was gonna take a nap before I went back to work, but so I might have to pause you guys again. All right, so I tied those two together. Now what I do is normally just lay that one across my work and keep on going. All right, so now I'm in row seven. So I want to increase seven. So I'm gonna chain my one, go into the very stitch that I did my slip knot and I'm gonna count till I get to seven and when I get to seven I'm going to increase and this is where I lay down the yarn that I just cut and give it a smooth transition two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'll do an increase right there. All right, I want to show you something with this. I'm into row seven with the increase as I added that new color. This one is starting to get a little bit more wiggly than I want, so I'm not gonna increase the next row because this yarn is really thick. Now, if yours using a thinner yarn, you may still keep doing your increases every row. Another trick is if you see it start um, start wiggling more than you want it to wiggle, then one, do one row increase and one row not increase. All right, so this whole row here, I'm not gonna do any increase. I'm just gonna go around, I'm gonna look at it, see how it looks. And it just all depends on your yarn choice. The thickness, the thinness of it, the texture. Uh, you could take strips of fabric and do the same thing and make a fabric scarf. If you uh, got a Zacta knife or a um, rotary cutter and laid out some fabric and cut small strips, wonderful piece. Uh, so there's so much you can do with this. But I just wanted to teach you the basics. So I'm gonna continue going around on this one uh, without any increase. And then I'll come back after uh, this row and tell you if I have to increase the next row or not. And we'll do that until I'm getting ready to put the white back on. And then what I did with my other piece, overnight I laid a heavy piece of, uh, I had like a checker or um, what is that thing called? Um, king and queens I can't think of what it is but and I just laid it on there to flatten it out and I didn't want it too flat I wanted it to look um, made and that just gave it its, its check texture and 
its texture. So anyway, I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to stop and come back when I get to the end to see if it's laying any better, if I need to increase. But like the rule of thumb, normal for just regular four ply yarn would be starting from the middle, do increase in every one, then the next one every every two, every three, every four, every five, every six, every seven, and so on. And if you find that the yarn you're using or your stitch is too tight and it starts getting too wavy, then you would increase one row and then you wouldn't increase the next row, meaning you just do one stitch in every one all the way around. And then you'd pick up the next row with your increase. So if this row was a five increase, this row would be no increase, and then this row would be six increase. This row would be no increase, and the next row would be seven, and so on and so on and so on. So I just wanted to give you the basic idea of how to make your circle. I was actually thinking of taking this circle and at some point counting my stitches, dividing it by four, and make corners to square it out. So I may even do that, but we'll see. I just wanted to basically teach you the round and show you a finished product when I was done. All right, so I looked down on the floor and I only have this much left. So I had to stop and go back to the white. So my yarn is going to dictate how large my clock is. All right, so it's still a little wiggly. So the next color, when I change colors to this white, I'm going to just not increase again and see what happens. But remember, an increase if you don't increase, eventually it's going to start curling this way. This is how you would make this into a tam. You'd go out as far as a tam as a hat, out as far as you want, and then you'd stop decreasing, and then the hat would start curling in and going this way. And then once it starts going this way, the faster you want it to come in, you can uh, decrease. You can start a decrease. But we're not talking about decrease today. We're working on a clock. All right, so I ended this one with this just little tail. I tightened it up really good. And this is another way that you can just close it off and start with a new yarn. So I'm just going to lay that there and just work across it. And so I could start anywhere in here I wanted to. It doesn't matter because the row is even. So because I want to lay across that, and I don't want a seam in there. I'm going to change and go over to here somewhere. And add in my new color. So there's my white. And then I'm going to pull it forward. And I'm going to slip knot it close. And then I'm going to chain my one to start my work. And then I'm going to go back in that stitch with a single. Because I'm working on singles. Now you may be doing half doubles or doubles. But I'm doing singles. And I'm going to lay my tail right across my work. And you want at least three to five inches so that you don't ever have to worry about it coming out. Say this was a garment or something and you might have to wash it or something. Uh, you don't ever want your tails to come out. So I'm just laying it across my work and keep right on going. Now I don't know if I'm going to have to do an increase with this stitch or not. I'm going to just not increase just to get going and see what happens. Because now this yarn is not as thick as this yarn. I probably could have even actually used a third strand to meet that thickness. But that's okay. We're here now. And there's never a mistake in your work because you could always take it and learn a new technique or anything. With everything I do, uh, I was making a top and ended up turning it upside down came back and picked it up after I had to go do something and I ended up seeing straps and was able to start making seamless straps on the top and one of those videos will probably be under my videos you can look at and see but I've learned so much just from making a mistake so I'm going to go around and I may try to do one or two rows now here's that tail and I'm just going to crochet right over it and I cut it so short because I realized I was running out of yarn and I wanted to make sure I have enough yarn to
to at least go around once when I finish this um, clock. All right, so I'll come back and that one not increasing should tighten that up pretty good for me. So I'm gonna try to do enough, I'll do enough whites so that I can lay my numbers in between that and then I'll end it. All right, I'm all the way around and it brought it in. It kind of tightened it up a little bit, just a little. Another way you can block your yarn, you can spray it down with water and lay it down flat and put something over it to block it in the shape that you need it to be. We gotta remember this is yarn. A lady on uh, one of my crochet sites gave me an idea that she saw on Pinterest where they made this and put it over a LP album to give it stability, to make it more firm. But I think what I really liked about my clock on the wall you could see the softness of it and it just brought a warmth into that area where I hung it. So I'm not gonna try to worry about making it stiff. Now I will put a picture of the one I did for my mother and hers was a little stiffer because I soaked it in some starch, starchy water and let it dry for a couple of days uh, so that it would be, give it that, uh, stability as some people might be looking for. All right, so I'm gonna go around again. Now, if I were to increase this row, if I feel like I need to increase, I would be at a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So in this row, I would do every 10 and increase just to keep it going outwards and not have it start turning in. But I'll get to 10 or 20 and see how it looks. If it doesn't look like I need to increase, I'll go around with no increases on this row and see what happens for the next row. Now I want to show you what this is 20 stitches from here to here this is 20 stitches and I want you to see how it's tightening it up. See that how it's tightening it up? I haven't done any increase. I'm going to do it all the way around. I'm not going to increase so that's going to be two rows I haven't increased. And I'm pretty sure by that next row, I'm going to have to do at least a every 11 or so. If not, it's going to start curling this way. And we don't want that to happen. All right, so here we go. I'll go all the way around. I threw that down on the floor so you can just kind of look at it. Isn't that going to be beautiful? That's my rug I made down there. It took me four months to make that. I call that my shag rug. But anyway, I'm going to pick it back up and uh, bring it in close so you can see the clock. But you see that little wave right there? But once we lay it down flat, spray it and wet it, it should be all right. All right, so I brought it back in. See it? Now this next row, I'm going to show you a technique. I'm still looking down here at my yarn. I'm getting low. See, my off-white is getting a little low. i got to be careful. All right, now this technique is going to call back loop. And the reason I'm going to do back loop on this is because I want to have that line prevalent so I can see it. And that's going to be based on my center where I lay my numbers. And uh, I'm going to do two more regular rows after this. So I'm going to chain my one, go in the first stitch. And what I'm going to do is go into the back. This, this stitch is going to be called the back loop. And back loop, let me show you what the back loop is. See the stitches? This is the front loop, this is the back. This is the front, that's the back. This is the whole stitch going in both of them. Alright, so we want to go just in the back loop. Everyone, and you can do the back loop with your half doubles, doubles, whatever you like. It's going to give you pretty much the same effect whether it's really tight close or not tight close or not <laughs> but here as you do it with that white you see that ridge that's forming right there that's because we left out the front loop of the single crochet stitch and I see my camera playing games on me here 
there it is see that isn't that beautiful so I'm gonna do that all the way around and if you mess up and go on both of them you're gonna you're gonna be able to have a break in that and you'll be able to see it so I'm gonna go in the back loop all the way around okay with my single and you could actually do this the whole the whole clock or the whole hat or whatever you're making in a circle if you'd like it makes I call it a ridge and it's really really nice try not to split your stitches just let the camera relax there it is beautiful all right I'm gonna go all the way around I'll be back I am also doing an increase in the 11th stitch of this row so every 11 I'm gonna do an increase because I still want my circle to grow outward I just don't want it to be really ruffle type. I'll be back. This clock of mine is just taking its own shape, okay? I can actually see that it's going to be gorgeous and I'm not even done yet. But this part right here is going to sit up off the wall and this part will be more flush. So I'm going to do two more rows of the white I'm not going to increase the next row of white, but the next row I will increase on the 12th one. And then I will put in the this color and finish it off, and that should be big enough. And uh, my numbers will go right in here. Alright, but I can see this part that's really bubbly right here. When it sits flush against the wall, up onto a wall, this part will just lay on there. So no no clock or whatever you do design will be the same unless you you know use exact same yarn but um, this is taking on its own effect because of this yarn fleecy kind of yarn that I actually use it was some leftovers I had from a scarf and a hat set that I made and it's I don't know if you can see I wish you could feel it but it's really really soft beautiful all right so I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up and then I'll come back to you when I have the last row on, when I'm putting this row on and finishing it off, praying that my ball will go all the way around. All right, and then uh, I'll put the information on there for you to see there how that's starting to bend down. So you have to be careful, you have to keep increasing because if you don't, that baby will start curling in. So that's why I had to start that increase there yeah all right love it love it love it. it's gonna be beautiful like I said earlier this thing took on a mind of its own so I'm liking the extra poof in it uh, and this edge part here is going to help it to lay down uh, this will be where the numbers are at in here and there's the line let's see if you can see the line yeah. that will distinguish my uh, to center my numbers and uh, what I'm going to do right here is go by the uh, unit so I can push it through the back and then I'll take this right here and run it through the back pull it tight once I get the unit in there and tighten it and so I'll probably try to do that tomorrow I'll go get it and show it on film and uh, glue everything on and it should be beautiful the, if you look at it and laid it out somewhere and said what is that I don't think anybody would tell you it's a clock okay so look at that I'm gonna throw it down there on the floor again so you can see it I wish it was up against something dark or light it would be pretty and I'm gonna show you how much I have left this is all the yarn I have left and I think I might try I like to use up all my yarns I think I'm gonna go all the way around with a slip stitch in the top of every stitch and pray that I make it and that's just to uh, just because I wanna use up my yarn a lot of time your yarn dictates what the outcome of your piece will be so I think again I'm gonna do it in the back loop 
and I'm just gonna slip stitch and that just gives it another texture, an element of texture. And uh, it's kinda hard to see with this yarn. But I'm just gonna go in the back loop and slip stitch all the way around and hope that it, it makes it. And if it doesn't, uh, I'll just take it a loop. But if it does, we'll make go all the way around with a slip stitch. It's just giving it a little bit more height. And when I lay it up against the wall, it'll just lay there. Okay, I'm happy. I did not do an increase on this row. The last three rows, the two whites and this one, I did not do increase. Alrighty. Beautiful. I hope you have fun with yours. And yours will probably end up being flatter because, like I said, I'm really just using scrap yarn. Yarn that I had. Uh, I like each one of them to be... Unique in their own. See, I could start trimming this down and going down into a hat if I wanted to. Alright, looks good. I'll be back.